So Resident Evil 7, uh, the band footage DLC is out. How many days after release? Like That's crazy. a week. <laughs> One week. Yeah. Um, and I know it's actually it is crazy how fast it was because I don't even like I know a lot of people haven't finished the game yet. Like you were saying, you need to finish it still. Right. Yeah, um, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> same with you. And we I beat it a while ago, a couple days before it released, and uh, I liked it a lot. I want to replay it in madhouse mode. J- uh, Jean-Luc's been doing that. He's playing in VR, which is crazy to me. He's He played through the entire game in VR, but um, <sighs> which apparently you can for this, for this game. Uh, it's really, VR is great in this game, but we, uh, I played the band footage, so if you guys had questions, I feel like I feel yeah. like, we got a lot of questions through uh, Twitch. If you, uh, or sorry, Twitter, if you're in Twitch or YouTube and have questions, feel free to hurl them my way uh so just to preface it quick nightmare is one of the tapes that's essentially like a survival run in the basement um from what i played you can unlock a harder difficulty but you essentially just run around the basement trying to survive like five waves of molded and crawlers and uh i don't want to spoil too much but there are other kind of like mini bosses involved um but you're collecting you're finding these compactors that you turn on for scrap and how it works is you're kind of trying to unlock more of the basement so you can loop around. But to do that, you need to buy like these uh, corrosive things to melt these locks. And then you, uh, you know, you just kind of say, do I want to buy handgun ammo or do I want to upgrade my health or do I want to buy the M37 shotgun or flame rounds? Or of course, you know, first aid. Uh, but you're also kind of trying to find these compactors. They like slowly deal out increments of 100 scrap, which you're using to buy these, as you can see here. But you are essentially just trying to you're surviving, right? But it's at a certain point the compactors will stop giving you scrap. So then you just kind of have to fight with what you've got. I got to the last fucking enemy on wave five and died. So this is a compactor right here. You can, if you're watching this, uh, you can kind of see it'll get to a hundred, then you can pick it up right there. This is my footage, so let's not judge me too harshly. But you have to survive <laughs> until dawn, till uh, five a.m. And I got to like four, whatever it was, the last enemy, and it killed me. Mm. Uh, um. Yeah, it sucked. But there is also the bedroom tape that comes with the band footage DLC. And this is more of an escape room based around Marguerite, the uh, matriarch of the Baker family. She essentially you wake up and you're, you, you were watching me play it. It's creepy. Marguerite's nuts, but you're, you're, you're handcuffed her. to the bed. <laughs> and you are essentially, it's got a cool angle. I don't want to spoil too much, but I do think it's cool. Um, here, Jake Decker and John Luke did a stream yesterday. So... There's a lot of stuff to do in the room to escape it, obviously, but also if she hears something loud, she will come back into the room. So the twist is before she comes back, you have to like reset everything you did or as much as possible so she doesn't see that you're out of bed and kill you. You have to get back in bed and like handcuff yourself again so she doesn't notice. Uh. It's pretty creepy. It adds like a really cool tense layer to it. Sure. It's awesome. I really yeah. like this escape room. Um. I think too much of it is kind of that um, the pit, the pitfall that a lot of like point and click adventures fall into where after a certain point I wasn't really solving a puzzle I was just like l- scanning the environment inch by inch to try to find something I could interact with uh, right. Jean-Luc didn't have as much trouble as I did I think maybe I just had just played Nightmare so I wasn't paying too much attention to the details but the DLC is very good it's $10 they have another one confirmed and then the season pass though is $30 so in order for that to make sense, there has to be at least like two more DLCs. Right. If they're both going to be ten dollars, because it's not even a deal. If there's only going to be three, that's thirty dollars. That makes sense. What I have a couple of questions. What uh, I guess without spoiling anything, are you playing as someone that's not Ethan? Is the is the idea being um, that it's like a different timeline? So it's it's the it's the Clancy Jarvis timeline. If you play the game, he is the <clears throat> cameraman for the um, that show. Mm. Okay. So it's essentially if you play the beginning hour demo, there's a certain point where he gets knocked out. It's gotcha. pretty much between that and then between this other thing that happens gotcha. in later in Resident Evil Seven. Neat. I won't, without spoiling anything. So cool. you're Clancy Jarvis, the cameraman. All right. Um, I think that does that make sense to you guys yeah, as far as you are in the game? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So I, we don't have to spoil that. But yes, you're Clancy Jarvis. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then the basement's the same layout as it is in the game. Okay. Um, yeah. And you said you can do this in VR? Yes. Seems it's uh, it's VR compatible. But apparently Ethan Must Die mode is also included in this, and it's harder than Madhouse. Apparently he can take, like, no damage at all. <laughs> I didn't get the chance to play it, but a lot of people, they just said there's a, there's a hard as nails, quote unquote, Ethan Must Die mode. Mm. Uh, and I didn't get the chance to play it, but Madhouse is already hard as hell. John luc was playing it, and... It was just like Jack just warps around. Different things <laughs> yeah, happen, like different points. Items, items are, different. are in different places, yeah. and yeah, like enemies are just tougher in general. But it essentially just sounds like Ethan Must Die is 
even harder, which mm. I don't know. We're going to get our next segment actually is we're going to get into like games that are better on their hardest difficulty. Um, I don't think Resident Evil 7 is, but there are games. But Eth Must Die kind of sounds like maybe a third playthrough difficulty. Do you want to get into that? It's kind of interesting how, like, I mean, how I'm seeing it just because this DLC is kind of different, right? Like, it's like meant for replayability. I wonder if they'll do something. Uh, as different for the next one or will it be like another type of like survival mm-hmm. thing I don't know right because the yeah it's it's a cool blend right it's just a new mode which is good enough that could have been an update but then there's the escape room which is more puzzle based and kind of this tension but then there's the nightmare yeah. which is more combat oriented and survival focused mm-hmm. I like nightmare a lot I actually want to play keep playing I did like four run throughs and I, the closest I got was my first one um, so you have to pick between the shotgun. Uh, you, you don't have to pick between these things, but obviously you have to know how to spend your money. It's one of those things where you, I'm sure people will start to get into a routine. Uh, you can set up these traps like turrets right here. You can kind of see on the wall behind him. Uh, these wire traps yeah. that destroy yeah. them uh, right there. But yeah, you start opening up more of the basement and getting other scrap benches. There's two scrap benches, at least that I found. I think that's all there is that you can actually build them. But that locked door right there, there's another compactor behind it. It... It was fun. I actually really liked it mm-hmm. for different reasons than I like the main game. There are a lot of enemies in Nightmare compared to the main game, uh, but I really do like it. I think it's worth the ten dollars if you haven't, uh, if you've beaten Resident Evil Seven. It did come out. I think I like the idea that they're trying to beat you know the For Honor release coming up on Valentine's Day. There's Horizon on the twenty eighth, two weeks after. Yeah. Rather, you know, like they're not competing with anything at the moment, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you got Neo next week. Just if you don't know, it's like the Japanese myth oriented, uh, kind of Dark Souls ish game. And yeah. I'm not just comparing it to Dark Souls, like we compare everything to Dark Souls, but it's it's like actually like sure. Dark Souls, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Miguel Concepcion is playing through that. Apparently, it's pretty tough. Um, but yeah. his review will be up that's like a very tomorrow, different tomorrow, I believe, review mm-hmm. in progress. Very different style of game, obviously. So it's yeah, again, the competition, yeah. Different. So, if you are interested in Neo, then uh, that review will be up tomorrow morning. But we do have a lot of Resident Evil 7 footage up, but I just wanted to get into questions about the band footage. Um, I don't know if you guys had any other things you were curious about. Uh, not a whole lot. Do you think we'll pl- you think you'll play in your basement, Kylie? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, my room's in the basement. I'm really paranoid that people are gonna look at me through the window because it's like ground level. So p- maybe not. Yeah. But the PSVR is in the living room, so I might just do that instead and use that as my excuse. Like, oh, I want to play it in VR. Yeah. Just, there. You know. There's something about those scenes where you. I mean, I, I guess I don't want to spoil it, but she like, well, she she's like. You know, you're it's pretty gross. <laughs> like, yeah. Imagine that in VR. Like, you're locked up and you're being force-fed body parts. You know, I was I was gonna bring that up when I yeah. played. I did a couple of the demos in VR, and when they're like force feeding you, it's horrible. Yeah. Like, I physically I moved out of range. I think. Like, I moved so far back that it didn't work anymore, and I had to like recalibrate. It was not good. Did not enjoy that. Yeah. I mean, I did and I didn't because it was like cool and gross. Ugh. But. Her you, face is horrible. What do you guys think of the game overall so far? I like it a lot. I think you and I talked about this, about the, not, like sort of, not thematically, but there you feel the uh, classic Resident Evil um, kind of spirit flowing through it. We talked about that a little bit, um, and that's what I like about it. I like that there's some of that. Um, I like that it's actually scary, like mm-hmm. terrified. <laughs> Yeah. Could yeah. play it. I agree. Really, sorry, one more quick before this phase from the chat. This is gonna make no sense if you're watching this breakout on YouTube, but Eric Green said Rob is central perk from friends. He's where everyone wants to be, or maybe all his friends want to crawl inside him. Rob, you're hating this so much, and that's why I'm enjoying it so much. Great. Uh yeah, we uh, it's all good. A friends joke from earlier in the show. Yeah. It's all good. Breakout video. But anyway, Resident uh, yeah. 7? Uh, touching back. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I find uh, the the jump scares to be not cheap, right? Like, there's yes. one in the beginning uh, where, you know, it's it got me so good. And I'm actually a pretty big scaredy cat, and I will yell. And it was like 1, 2 a.m. My roommate was like, dude, will you shut up? Because I'm just, it's not just like a yell. It's like a sentence I'm yelling, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, it's they're well done in the, in the respect that, like, they come at you when you're the most vulnerable or are in how are you feeling is the most surprising. Like I think I was telling one of you guys like you, it, they got me so good when I had just done something like it was leading up to like an accomplishment and it was like, Oh great. Like I'm doing pretty good in this game. And right as you're hitting that feeling jump scare and mm-hmm. that's when it got me so good. I was just screaming. Uh, and that's fun. I, I like, I have like a weird like 
I want to say relationship with like horror movies. I just don't know mm-hmm. if I, sometimes it's just, I hate the ones where it's like, I'm just up all night thinking about said movie. Yeah. I can't go to sleep. Someone being in your room about to kill you. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think I was scared of the ring for like 10 straight years totally. and then I watched it again and I was like, what? Why was I scared of that? Yeah. I do. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, no, no. I was going to say The Exorcist is my, uh, the movie that has haunted me forever. Wait, I really? I watch it again. Yep. It's one of my favorite movies and I can't watch it anymore. I can't handle Chucky, like the doll. <laughs> oh, really? Jesus. I don't know why. I just can't. And they made a Bishojo figure of Chucky. Like it's a little, it's horrible. I hate it. Ugh. Anyway, I meant to ask you, Mike, because I've been curious about this. You are easily startled. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would say. Mm-hmm. I think everyone could agree on that. Yes. How do you, and you really like horror and I'm yes. really curious how that works. Uh, it's <laughs> more, I don't know. It's kind of masochistic, I guess, but also mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't, mean, I don't have anything like against a, jump scares. Like, there's like a tr- adrenaline high yeah. somewhere yeah. in there. Like maybe it is sort of like I, I appreciate horror more when it's more dread and tension and disturbing than jump scares yeah right. which is why I, I like Resident Evil 7 or that's why I used to like Resident Evil 7 or Resident Evil 3 Nemesis because it's the thing hunting you the whole time the Nemesis and then I replayed it with Mary Kish recently and I don't like that game anymore like cool. I think it's bad ish I think it's an okay game that's a separate conversation but we uh I'm gonna plug it quick Mary Kish and I play through all the Resident Evil games on uh Resident Evil. But uh, there's a lot of Resident Evil content we have up. But uh, I don't know. Maybe it is like a masochistic or the adrenaline rush of horror. Um, I appreciate like good horror movies that actually, like I said, increase the dread. Like It Follows mm-hmm. is one of my favorite horror movies. In I years. love It Follows. Yeah, it's and really I like good. the idea that it's not. Don't you don't do there that. There are a couple jump scares, but it's <laughs> but it's they're earned really. Like and the, I, the beach. I the won't beach say anymore. Good, but the yeah. beach is pretty. Um, or the the bedroom door, if that makes Ooh, sense. Yes. Yeah. It's good, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't scare too easily in terms of like I jump scare easily, but I don't scare too easily in terms of actually getting creeped out or anything. Gotcha. Gore you, doesn't bother me. Were you scared a lot in this game? Like, were you jumping around? Resident like, Seven. Yeah. Like, um. Yes. Uh, there were a couple times being chased in this game, which right. is something I think Outlast and from what I played of Outlast Two, they do really well. Is mm-hmm. the terror of being chased, knowing someone's right behind you, especially because Jack Baker in this game. <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, there's there's someone that chases you in the DLC that's it's f- way faster than you are, so it's terrifying oh, because scroll. you can outrun it. You never know that, so that's why VR I think uh, works really well with this game because it feels like they're right behind you, not just you know right behind Ethan the character or anything. Um, and yeah, like zero HX CO seven was saying psychological horror is the best horror. I mm-hmm. totally agree. That the stuff that actually can mess with you mentally is my favorite. Did um, you watch The Wailing? No. Um, it was a 2016 Korean horror film. That one was super psychological. And it's like two and a half hours or something. And I just thought about it for the next two days. Uh, yeah. That's one I would recommend. Eric Green, again, the one who compared you to Central Perk, I believe. He was saying Green Room had some body <laughs> horror that stuck me a few days. Green Room's really good. That's more. That's less like horror, but it's more uh, like gore and like super kind of realistic looking violence. But anyway, <laughs> Resident Evil 7. Uh, I completely recommend this DLC if you've beaten it or if you like keep it in your mind while you're beating Resident Evil 7. Uh it's got a lot of good variety. We might be doing more extensive write-up. I'm not completely sure. I think Scott Butterworth wants to check it out at some point and see what he wants to do. And Pete Browner, reviews editor, will be the one to make that call. But we have a lot of Resident Evil 7 content up right now. We have Reviving Resident Evil. Uh, our UK team and myself traveled to Japan at Capcom semi-recently a couple months ago to uh, do a behind-the-scenes documentary about Resident Evil 7 uh, and also how it influenced like indie horror and how indie horror influenced uh, this the newest game and how the series kind of declined until now. Um, we do have another thing that you, Jake, and I are working on kind of semi-soonish mm-hmm. about Resident Evil 7 and uh, Silent Hills and whatnot. So yeah, just go over to GameSpot. We have a lot of good Resident Evil 7 content up and uh, we read the comments, so leave your thoughts and we will respond to them when we get the chance. <laughs> <laughs>